Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. Yesterday's release, the uh, thumbnail creator, I think that went pretty well. I know there's a whole load of people who've been sharing some cool stuff they've been making with it. So, we got some big news. It looks like Laura's are back on the menu. So, um, what I've got for you, and this link will be added to the description if you scroll all the way past all the videos, past all the features, go all the way to the bottom. At the very bottom, you will find the link. And that link is here. So what we have here is uh, Flux Loras. They've been converted by our good friend Kijai, who did all that stuff for us with Mimic Motion, Soup here, the wrapper for colors. Man's hard working. I like him. But basically what he's done is he's converted a whole bunch of these. Now, these are actually from X-Labs, but they've been converted into comfy format. Now, when I've tried them out, they work like refiners. So these are like a style refiner. It's not going to give you unique images unless, of course, somebody can share the uh, trigger words because there aren't any trigger words we can find. Um, so if anybody knows where they are, go ahead and shove a link in the description or uh, sorry in the comments or come and tell us on discord but um it is an improvement mostly to the vibrance and the color range i found i found but hey there it is so what you're going to want to do is download these shove them in a in your laura's folder i put them in a subfolder flux so you know if you look at my workflows you will notice that the Lauras are all in a flux flux folder. All right. Now, what I've done for you guys is I've put in a Laura stack and I've already preloaded the five that I use. So, I mean, you could put the one that's missing. I think that's the Disney one. Put that one in there if you want to. Um, and you'll notice I'm already using a mix of 0.3 on the art Laura. 0.3 on the scenery Laura and 0.6 on the realism Laura. My prompt, which we're going to look at, is actually a whole bunch of randomizers. Um, I want to try and use one word substitutions for these. So I don't want to have a space. So I could say brick. Well, it's just going to. I'm just going to say in front of a wall. It's fine for now. I do like brick though. Let's say brick. Brick wall. All right. So moving on, let's just give you the rundown of the workflow. So what we've got here is we've got our loaders. If you're using the checkpoint, you're going to want to hook those up to the references. As I said in the past, you just drag model to model, clip to clip, and VAE to VAE. So if you're using that method, that's fine. Up top, we've got our noise seed, which is currently fixed. Got our project name, which is going to organize all of the output files that we're generating. And then we're currently using 16 to 9 with aspect size V2. That's going to get sent through. So if we do an image to image, it's going to resize the image to the aspect ratio. And right now we've got it on text to image mode. So first things first, I'm just going to turn on the LoRa. We've already got an image which doesn't. It's got no Laura. Now, there might be some changes because of the randomizer. And there you go. So this is what I get out of my favored mix. And we're going to throw this one into the upscaler in a bit. And then I'll be able to show you how that works. We'll do that next. But first, I just wanted to show you this. So first of all, let's just turn off all of them real quick. Okay. Okay, so we've got all of them off. So this is the same as disabling the uh, stack there. So you'll notice all of the LoRa's are off. And that will give us an image. And what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, anime to the uh, front of the prompt. So you can see here, you see how now worse face, worse fingers. Okay, so what we can do, uh, let's just put, instead of photo, let's just put anime. Okay, and then we'll run it again. And that will give us uh, something to compare. So there we go. We've got our, our anime image, which is pretty good. It's pretty good, but when you zoom in, this is what we get. So now what we'll do is we'll just turn on the uh, anime Laura. 
got it at strength one. Now, it might change because of the randomizer, as I say, but we're judging it on the actual quality of the output. So we'll be able to tell by looking at the face. So there we go. It's slightly changed. Now, if I was to compare like for like, which I have done, it's going to, it increases the quality of the line, the contrast, and also the color gets richer as well. And sometimes the spelling gets a little bit better as well. Um, but it depends which ones you're loading. Certainly you get a cleaner anime style uh, when you load the anime. Uh, I, like I said, these are like style refiners as far as I'm concerned. So now I'm going to take this. Now, do you know what? I'm going to try. Well, no, we'll do it without first. In fact, did we even? I just want to make sure I'm not going mental. Yeah, I already did it. Right, cool. So let's move on to the mid journey one. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm just going to say, do you know what? I might actually say MJV6. Who knows? Maybe that's the tag. We just don't know. I'll remove it and see if it made any difference. See, in my mind, Laura's should have trigger words, even if they say they don't have trigger words. I mean, does that look? I mean, it's kind of hard. Uh, I mean, MJ's better than that, to be honest. Let's just. Um, Take the MJ out, replace it with photo. See, the thing is, I get a much, much bigger quality bump from the upscaler that we've built with Flux than we would from this Laura anyway. Uh, but I'm going to put my final combo on. Obviously, you feel free to explore all of these. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to put my favored mix on now. So that would be 0.3 on the art Laura, 0.3 on the scenery Laura, and then... 0.6 on the realism, Laura. Now, if we were talking about the thumbnail creator that I made yesterday, I would probably only load the art Laura into the text layer. I would only load the scenery Laura uh, for the background, and I'd use realism for the for the subject. That's that's how I would actually. I wouldn't load all of them all the time. It's because we're doing one image, but we were doing separate layers, and that's just a good example of how you could use it. Throw it on randomize and put it on auto queue and let it run. A little bit bigger, please. That'll do. Okay. So, yeah, see, these images are really nice. Okay. So, this is your uh, no cherry picking. This is just literally what's coming out. You've seen my prompt, you've seen my seed. Uh, you know, it's just on random. Now, at this point, because we're in text to image, we can't reduce the denoise, but what we can do is we can increase the shift. So currently we're at 1.5. So I'm just going to take it to zero so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got, I put it negative a minute. It might be inverted for one generation. So that, <laughs> Okay, so this is, this is shift zero we're currently looking at, all right? And it's pretty good. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie. It looks really good, actually. If I just zoom that in on that one. And we're going to upscale a few of these. All right. Nice. It's looking good. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one and leave a range of one. And we'll see what we get from that. Now, I've shown this in previous videos already. Okay. Having a nice range will increase the variety in the image. And then having higher values will push the prompt following. Oh, oh, we got a hand in pocket. <laughs> we've got extra hands. What's she holding the book with? <laughs> and this is what I mean by the variance, right? So let's say I put it to two now. So now we have a, a, a range of two. And we're going to start getting even more crazy variations and stuff. It's not always artifacts. It's just creative variation. So... Okay. Let it keep going. Like I said, this prompt is making interesting enough images. Now, what happens if I go to three? So now we're going to have even more. Now, I find you can go up to about five uh, before it starts to go completely insane. And I'll have to be careful. If the video just suddenly stops, it's because we went into uh, strange territory. <laughs> so now let's go to four. Now, normally I wouldn't have such a big range. 
but this gives it the most amount of uh, creative variety. It's more apparent with image to image because obviously you're mixing it with something else and you can see that sort of 50% point. Ah, look, see, her face is starting to get cooked. You see, every now and then, but they are, oh, okay. Yeah, you see, you see, it's starting to get a bit like, oh. so, like I said, reduce the range and it will get better. So it'll be stronger with the prompt following, but it won't be like completely cooked. If you can see those faces, they're not good. Okay, so here we've got a good range, but look, floating books, strange faces and teeth. Let's decrease the range more. I, I think this is still too high. All right. I think this needs to probably be about three for what we're doing. I'm going to change that. So now we're narrowing the gap. And this is a bit like tuning two knobs, you know. You're basically trying to tune in on a radio station. That's how I look at it anyway. Okay, so now we're going to match it with three. And it's still too high. So we'll go down to two and two because we already had it on two and two. We did find a nice value. And at any point, you can just go, oh, I kind of like the look of, where was it? Where was it? Not that one. That one. That one was pretty good. I'll keep going. This one was pretty. Whoops. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? <laughs> it's making him so fast I can't find him. That one was pretty good. That one was pretty good. So basically, if you find the best ones, it's like you're getting, you know, you can just go and dial in by, because I'm obviously doing big jumps. You could be moving like 0.1 at a time to try and really nail it. Um, but like I said, normally I start off with a default of like one and one. And I tend to go from 0 0.5 to 1.5 with text to image. But it depends what you're working with and stuff. What, what type of image is it that you're trying to make? You know, it's different settings, but these are looking pretty good. She's got extra thumbs. That one's not bad. It's a little bit overcooked on the face. And like I said, this is why sometimes with text to image, I might go down as low as uh, 0.5. Oh, look at that. That one was really good. The face is a bit cooked, but we can fix. We can fix everything that we've seen so far is not been a deal breaker everything that we've seen so far okay and so now i'm going to put this to 0 0.5 and that should be that part done yeah there we go look at the look at them go all right let's stop that now clear the queue stop I'm just going to make one more just to make sure I'm not going nuts because I saw a bunch of extra ones in the queue. And sometimes what can happen is it's only it what it may be. It, yeah, I want to make sure that it was doing what I thought it was doing. So, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Sometimes I worry that the live edit doesn't actually apply to what we're doing. Because, you know, if you've got one live queue running and then there's two pending, well, the changes I was trying to show off could have been in the pendings, but I'll have to trust that it did what it, you know, I'll trust that it did it. Anyway, obviously by doing one image at a time, we could have been more sure about it. Okay, so that pretty much explains that. I've shown you where you can get the LoRa's. This is a workflow that gives an example of how to load the LoRa's. We've covered mixing LoRa's in a stack, which I think is infinitely more important than just putting one loader in. You should really have a stack and have your favorites with your weights all nice. Um, I, that's what I do anyway. Um, just remember that all of the sort of stuff is up here. It's probably, like I said, V10 will make a more optimized version so that it's not like half easy node and half lines. I'm probably just going to go back to pure lines because we had a lot of problems with people who didn't have, because they updated easy nodes like a bunch of times um, at, at the same time as Flux has come out. And I know that that's <laughs> left people kind of like, why can't I install it? And it's, it's kind of just because everything keeps updating all the time um, and that can break things. Right, 
So that is Flux Laura. I uh, can't wait to see what people are training. Um, I won't doubt that there will be more training services appearing. So keep an eye on the Discord because obviously we'll be sharing any information we can find. And if you get any, join the Discord and uh, start the conversation. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. So memberships are here. I've added donator and member. The donator membership is just uh, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. And uh, check out the join now button for more information.